uh, UAE is one of our biggest trading partners. I mean, not just on the oil side, but even on the non-oil side, you know, it's one of our largest export markets, not just for our goods, but also for our services, for our people, right? I mean, so there was natural, uh, you know, th- there were a lot of synergies, you know, which kind of led to this particular trade agreement. I would say it's a far more comprehensive trade agreement than, you know, just to be classified as an FTA because there's an investment component to it. There is a labor component to it. So, you know, it, it sort of allows the two countries to basically have a lot more uh, thought out and strategic involvement in the, into each other's economy. I, I would say, you know, the, the the most interesting thing is that, okay, the number of goods, as you said, Carrie, you know, are going to be t- tariff free on 90%, but actually oil is not part of that, right? So oil has been kept out of it. And, and that's mainly because a, India puts a lot of excise, you know, and, and import duties on oil. So we we cannot really uh, make that as part of a, for the trade agreement. But then certainly, as far as say an export destination, so so food would be a very critical part of it. That India will now get a lot of preferential access as far as its food exports are concerned. Uh, not that it wasn't the case, you know, we were exporting a lot of food to the mid- Middle East for as well. But now, you know, maybe for our dairy sector, for our uh, you know a lot of our processed food, uh, you know, there will be even greater uh, access uh, that will be provided in the market. Uh, what it also does, I think, is that it sort of increases the brand value of Indian products, right? Because one of the problems you know you could you could say is that while while our food processing industry or even in other areas you know our manufacturing sector has you know improved but then there is a big gap between what you would call as say an export quality right so that's still a thing in india where you know you would say certain things are export quality and certain things are only made for the domestic audience i think the idea should be that we bridge the gap and the more we are exporting, especially the breadth of products that we are exporting tends to increase, you will see the benefits of that spilling over. So what it does is that it basically creates the opportunity for people to say, okay, fine, if my product is being exported and is being consumed quite easily in a place like UAE, right, which is effectively a first world living quality, you know, for all practical purposes, why can't I be exporting it out to Jordan, say, you know, uh, to, to Bahrain, to Saudi and, you know, and, and, and other markets as well, right? Right. So I think it gives people a sense of that, okay, once you sort of hit that breadth of products, it will lead to more multiplier effects as Nira was mentioning. So it was a very natural one. I think I'm particularly excited about the next one, which is in the pipeline, which is a FTA with the GCC countries, right? So basically with the larger Middle Eastern uh, universe and, you know, from that perspective, uh, it will particularly be very big for India's food markets uh, or food exports, which have already been growing quite fast. And, you know, it could sort of establish India as a very large and very reliable food exporter, right? Because in the past, we have actually been quite unreliable. You know, we, we tend to come up with all kinds of rules to prevent exports. But if we have long-term commitment in that region, you know, we, we will see uh, one area of India's exports markets diversifying, which is in the food side. I think it could also eventually be very good for our companies who are involved with construction, etc. They are already quite big in the Middle East, but then, you know, it will lead to more multiplier effects, both for uh, the capital and for the labor market. Markets, uh, within the countries. India should be a very large beneficiary of any uh, shift away from China or a China plus one strategy. But then it also partly is incumbent on us to make sure that we have the right set of you know uh, industrial policies and the bottom-up environment as far as say operational capacity is concerned is, is being done correctly. So I think there is a fair amount of positive movement I personally see as far as uh, certain states are concerned, right? So if you look at, say, the industrial environment that's prevailing in places like uh, Karnataka or Tamil Nadu, UP incrementally, Haryana, Gujarat, uh, you know, these are the states which appear the best place to kind of, you know, benefit from some of these relocations. And, uh, you know, in the past, we have seen similar dynamic play out. So the reason why India has become, you know, a reasonably large exporter of automobiles is not because we were doing something very right. You know, there was the the flooding issue in, uh, so the, you had the earthquakes in, uh, in, in Japan, you had the flooding in Thailand, and it basically required a lot of the Japanese uh, auto producers to have another country which they could use as a, as a as a base for manufacturing, right? So you need a, a level of serendipity, you need some amount of strategic planning, and then you also need, uh, you know, a, a fair amount of execution skills. So it's not the easiest thing, right? If it was, then, you know, a lot of other countries would have been, would have been in, 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 you know, in position of strength as far as developing a manufacturing sector, which is towards export is concerned, but it's a very hard thing to do, right? What what I do, you know, see as a as a positive development is that we have probably 
a reasonably good assessment of our key strengths and and our weaknesses and so you know if we can we can be aware of that and we can accordingly position ourselves we should be in a position to benefit at least a bit if not you know in a very large way at least you know at the margin we will end up net positive uh, from that from that transition that comes about i think one of the one of the good things that's going for india in the in the current environment i think is that we have a sense that you know uh, despite uh, whatever has happened say in the last couple of years the strategic direction or, or you know the broad direction for the indian economy has not shifted very materially right what has effectively happened is that the timelines around economic size has been pushed out so you know instead of hitting 5 trillion dollars economy by 23 24 we will probably get there by 25 26 or 26 27 we will still be a reasonably you know we'll be like the third biggest economy in the world maybe by the end of this decade uh, you know so that economic size itself should allow us to you know become better at manufacturing a few things right because our industrial policies have corrected to a point where you know it is imperative for a lot of companies to come make in india because it's just uneconomical to do so uh, you know uh, just purely from a taxation and from you know from a from a trade perspective so i think we will we will benefit from a lot of these factors but i still don't think i would you know necessarily say that this will be the biggest driver of growth in india right i think the biggest driver of activity in india will remain the domestic consumption cycle which is to a large extent fulfilled by domestic services or domestic uh, goods manufacturing exports can just become like a you know uh, an an additive uh, area right and and this is where whatever little we can get whether it's 50 basis points or 100 basis points of additional growth through the export channel i think that's good enough for us as long as it's not cutting away into our domestic activity is good enough i think so 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 that shift in the in the focus area or in the balance i think is a, is a positive development and we just need to ensure that you know that sticks uh, whether it's through ftas or you know through through direct innovation uh, whichever way we can do it